Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about how you can go about graphing polynomial functions by hand. Um, just a heads up, you are going to have to have prior knowledge on how to use the rational root theorem. I have videos on that, so if you don't know what the rational root theorem is, make sure you check out those videos. Okay, so getting into this problem, the first thing we want to do is we want to determine what type of behavior this graph is going to have. All right, we want to determine the end behavior. That way we have a general idea of what we're looking for when we go about graphing it. So if we look at our leading coefficient, we know that it's going to be 1. Our leading coefficient is 1, and our degree is 3. So that means that our leading coefficient is going to be greater than 0, okay? and we have an odd degree. So that means we can expect to have a graph with this type of behavior. Okay? Whereas x approaches negative infinity, the function will be approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, the function will be approaching positive infinity. All right? So we can expect this type of behavior. All right? So let's get into the problem. And if we look at our function, all right, the first step we want to do here is try to get the zeros, because remember the zeros are going to be points on the graph, and we can use that graphing the function. Remember the zeros are where it's crossing the x-axis. So looking at this function, I have four terms here. There's a possibility that I could use factoring by grouping here. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out. So if we group the first two terms and then the last two terms, we may be able to factor this way. All right, so let's try it. So looking at the first two terms, I have a greatest common factor of x squared, and that means I'll have x, and then I'll have plus 3, okay? Well, looking at my last two terms, they have a greatest common factor of negative 2, and then I'll have a 3x, okay, and then negative 4. Well, looking at this, our common factor is not the same. So since it's not the same, we can't use factoring by grouping here. So we're going to have to rely on the rational root theorem, all right, to get the zeros of this function. All right, so remember the rational root theorem is simply just P over Q, where P is my constant and Q is my leading coefficient. All right, and we're just going to get factors of both of these. So if I go ahead and do this out, some factors of negative 8 are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, or plus or minus 8. And then my leading coefficient, plus or minus 1. We're going to go ahead and divide these out. So we'll get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and then plus or minus 8. Okay. Remember, when we're using the rational root theorem, like we are here, we're going to have to use synthetic division. So we look at our function, did we skip any terms? And it looks like we didn't, right? We went from x cubed to x squared to x to our constant. Remember, if you skip a term, you have to put zeros in for those coefficients all right, of the missing terms. So in this case, we can just go ahead and bring down the coefficients. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're bringing down the 1. Bringing down the 3, the negative 6, and then the negative 8. And then I'm going to set up synthetic division. And I'm going to pick negative 1. All right? We're going to test negative 1 here. Remember, if we get a, a remainder of 0, that tells us that negative 1 is, in fact, going to be a root of this function. All right? So let's go ahead and try this. We bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 3 and a negative 1 make 2, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 6 and negative 2, that's negative 8. And then negative 8 times a negative 1, well that's going to be positive 8, and it looks like we lucked out because our remainder is 0 here. Okay, so that tells us that yes, negative 1 is in fact going to be a 0 of this function. So I'm going to record that up here, x equals negative 1, just so we have that on hand. And remember, we just did synthetic division, meaning we divided, so we naturally 
lose a degree. We go down a degree. So this now really says x squared, x, and our constant. So if we rewrite here, this really says x squared plus 2x minus 8. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase this top part here, and I'm going to keep working this function to get the remaining zeros. Okay, so we have x squared plus 2x minus 8. Well, here we can go ahead and try to factor to get the remaining zeros. We can use the AC method. So A times C here is going to be negative A. Okay? And then we say what two numbers when we multiply are going to be negative 8, but add up to 2. So in this case, that's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 2. Okay? And remember, this is all equal to 0 because we're solving for the zeros. So again, when we multiply these two numbers, it will be negative 8. But when we add them, it will be positive too. So when we solve each one of these factors, we'll get x equals negative 4, right? And then looking at this one, if we set it equal to 0, x will equal 2. So I now have three of my zeros, negative 4 and 2. So what we can do, we can go to our graph and just put these points on the graph. Now the graph is going by 2, so just keep that in mind. So negative 1 is going to be a 0, so we're going to put a negative 1 here. All right. We have negative 4, so negative 2, negative 4 right here. All right. And then we have a positive 2, so right here. All right. So at this point, we have our zeros. Well, let's see where this function is crossing the y-axis. So remember, when it's crossing the y-axis, the x, okay, will always be zero. So knowing that, if we plug a zero into anywhere that we see an x, that will give us where it's crossing, all right, the y-axis. So you could say f of zero, right, is going to be equal to, we'll just plug in zeros here. So this will be zero cubed, plus 3 times 0 squared minus 6 times 0 minus 8. Well, when we do this, we know that this is going to cancel out. This will cancel out. Cancel out. We're left with negative 8. So this is crossing the y-axis at negative 8. So that's another point. So here we go. We're going to go negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. All right. Now, we already determined what this end behavior of the graph is going to look like. We're going to have something like this, okay? So keep that in mind. So knowing that, all right, our next step, what we should do, we need to determine, you know, how high this function is going up in between these two points. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. For these guys down here, how low is it going before it comes back up? All right, so let's go ahead and go on to the next step. So remember, this point is negative 1. This is negative 4. So I'm going to pick a point in between the two to see what's going on, all right? So I'm just going to pick negative 3, all right? You could pick negative 2. That's fine as well. Let's pick negative 3. So if I do F of negative 3, I'm just going to plug this in. Anywhere I see an x, I'm plugging in negative 3. So negative 3 cubed plus 3 times negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 minus 8. All right, let's go through this. Negative 3 cubed, that's going to be negative 27. Negative 3 squared is 9 times 3. That's positive 27. Well, these guys just cancel out. Then we're left with negative 6 times a negative 3. That's positive 18. 
minus 8, well that's going to be 10. Okay, so we know that at negative 3, this function is going to be at 10. Alright, so right here we have negative 2, negative 3, let's go up 10, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right up here. And we're going to make a point right here. Okay. All right, guys, we are now going to pick another point. So we want to figure out how low this is going between negative 1 and 2. So we know at 0, it's going down to negative 8. At 2, the function is at 0. So let's pick 1 and see how low this is going. So f of 1. All right, then we'll get... 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 minus 8. So this is going to become 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 3. Alright, this is negative 6 and then negative 8. Let's just combine these now. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 and a negative 6 make negative 2. And then I have negative 2 and 8, which make negative 10. Okay, so when we plug in a 1, the function will be at negative 10. So let's go ahead and just put that point in. So at 1, okay, we're at negative 10. Remember, these are going by 2s. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right here. Alright, and we are pretty much done. We know what the end behavior looks like. Alright, so as x approaches negative infinity, the function is also approaching negative infinity, so it's going down, right? So we're starting here, we're going to come up, and then make our way back up. So we are going to have a function that looks something like this. And that is it. So that is how you graph a polynomial function by hand.